The Detroit Tigers have a very noteworthy schedule. The next 14 games are going to kind of roadmap the rest of April and then obviously preview the series against the Twins. All today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Thursday, April 11th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. From breaks and exhaust kits to beyond, eBay Motors has 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to you as customers. Welcome in everyone. Hope you're all having a fantastic Thursday, we have an off-day episode for you today, as the Tigers obviously did not play on Wednesday. want to take a day to just kind of roadmap the rest of the month. Uh, this is, man, I, I struggle to use the word important because every game is important, and it is April. And, and those two things together make me not want to highlight, you know, weeks two through four in the regular season and be like, hey, these are vital. So I, I think I struggle to use the word important, but they're, you play really good teams the next two weeks is my point. And uh, obviously, again, the reason why I struggle to use the word important is not because they're not, it's because they, they definitely are. <laughs> and so you have this stretch of games where if you don't pick it up offensively, you are going to nosedive. This team is going to plummet if they don't get their act together offensively. We're going to kind of break that down, talk about who they're going to play. Again, just kind of roadmap the rest of April, which has become such a talking point for this organization in the A.J. Hinch era after year after year after year getting off to poor starts in April. So we'll talk about that. We're going to start off with some news and notes, just talk about some injuries that have happened in Toledo that are very relevant. Relevant? Rele wow. Relevant to the Major League team. And then we are going to end with a preview on the Twin Series because we have an off day. We can go a little bit more in depth on our preview even than we usually do. So let's start off by talking about the injuries and just news and notes surrounding the organization on Wednesday. First off, Matt Manning scratched from his next start in Toledo. Now, there's a, a lot of rumors flying around about why that may be. Uh, I am recording this at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, and there is no answer yet. So there may be an answer by the time that you are listening to this, in which case there's your answer. But for right now, in my version of reality, it's just speculation. There's a lot of rain, unfortunately, on the forecast for Thursday and Friday because the Tigers haven't had enough rainouts already. So I don't think that anyone on the rotation is injured. If they, if they are, we certainly have not heard about it. But I think that this is probably just some insurance if games are rained out yet again. Uh, I, I Again, by my knowledge, Matt Manning's healthy and everyone in the Tigers rotation is healthy. But obviously, that news will come out when it comes out. Again, decent chance, unfortunately, that it rains on Thursday and Friday. Ryan Kreidler got hit in the hand with a pitch because that hasn't happened to him enough in his professional career. So he has a right index finger fracture. He broke his right index finger. I feel so bad for the dude. He, he crushed in spring and what, a year and a half ago, two years ago, he got hit in the hand and it completely derailed the momentum that he had going for him that season as well. So I'm just hoping that it's not anything too serious and that it doesn't affect his play too terribly much. This is obviously somebody that a lot of people have pointed to for getting opportunity at the major league level. Uh, obviously, I mean, everybody talks about it with Javi and whatnot. That's not going to happen, at least a one-for-one -one swap. But 
if Javi was to ever get hurt or if Andy Abanez obviously just got hurt, they went with Winsteel Perez. If Zach McKinstry was to get hurt, this is, this is the depth that matters. And unfortunately, Ryan Kreidler, who would have been one of the first calls uh, if another injury happened, now has a broken right finger. So we'll keep an eye on that situation. Uh, Eddie's Leonard, as well, left oblique strain. He is scheduled to start a rehab assignment in Lakeland this week, according to the Tigers medical report. So we'll see what that necessarily means. But yeah, not awesome. Really not awesome that your infield depth is just absolutely dropping like flies before the halfway point of April. That That's not awesome. So hopefully the, the Eddie's injury specifically is nothing too serious. Ryan Kreidler, just wishing him nothing but the best. And uh, in the meantime, hopefully everyone on the Tigers roster can stay healthy because <laughs> that, you know, we're, we're an infielder going down away from, from being in kind of a heap of trouble. So knock on wood, wherever it's near you. Um, let's talk about the next 14 games. So, you have a four-game set against the Twins. You have a four-game set against the Texas Rangers. Then you have a three-game road series against the Minnesota Twins again. And then you have a three-game road series against the Tampa Bay Rays. That is 14 good teams, good, difficult opponents. I know the Twins haven't gotten off to a great start. I don't care. That's a good roster. That, that That's your next 14. Then you end the month with like Kansas City and St. Louis. Minnesota, Texas, Minnesota, Tampa Bay. It is time to wake up the bats. And that's so much easier for me to just be a jerk uh, on the internet and just say, right? It, I realize how much more difficult it is for me to just say, well, you should just hit. Ha ha. Like, <laughs> I, I understand there's significantly more that goes into it than just that. But you, you have to. It is imperative. April has been your weakness for years. And the next 14 games, they will not make or break your season unless you go like 0 for 14. But they will make or break your April. That, that is a, a large chunk of the month. And we have talked so much about getting off to a good start. Not being, you know, 10 games under 500 in the month of April. Not completely... Just making the rest of your season irrelevant for a better, for lack of a better term, because you you can't crawl yourself out of the hole you dug yourself into in April. They, they've thankfully, despite the offensive struggles, have gotten off to a decent start, and, and they're and they're seven and four, and that's awesome. But they've played the White Sox, the Mets, and the Athletics, and, and the Pirates, obviously. But I'm focusing on on the teams that are are probably not going to be very good. Pirates, maybe not even either. Right. This is it. It is imperative for you to not completely nosedive and plummet and bottom out in the month of April. Let's keep this conversation rolling. We'll do that right after this. Got to talk to y'all today about our new friends over at Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options to top companies and their team of licensed experts is hand on to help you talk through the entire process. You can talk to a team of award winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. Also, Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. So check life insurance off of your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. Also got to talk to you all today about our friends over at eBay Motors. 
passion, drive, and patience is the formula for winning championships and also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home that huge win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, as always, making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will be back tomorrow recapping game one of the Minnesota Twins series, hopefully, assuming they play. Also, be sure to check out Locked on Sports today, the 24-7 sports streaming channel. You can check them out over on YouTube, subscribe to them there, or watch them for free on the free Fire TV channels app. Um, so talking about the next 14 games, it, look, I'm not telling you something you don't already know with the fact that the offense has to wake up. Uh, you, you can't win a season in April, but you can certainly lose it and you can put yourself way behind the eight ball. I'm not asking for this team to go 10 and four, right? Over the next 14 games. I'm not, I wouldn't even be upset at 500 or just under 500, right? If they if they crawl out of this thing with a, a record on the season over 500 that gives you a, a two or three game cushion, I, I would be a, probably a happy camper. These are, these are tough teams. You desperately need to keep your head above water and hit. You're going to face a lot of good pitchers in this stretch specifically. All right, the Twins rotation twice. We'll talk about that here a little bit in a second, but the Rays, we all know the Rays in pitching, right? Maybe we'll face Tyler Alexander. That'd be kind of funny. How's he doing on the year? I I honestly don't even know. How's Tyler Alexander done so far? I know he started at least one game, and they kind of want him preferably in that swingman role, but they've had a lot of injuries, like everybody, really, has had a lot of pitching injuries. I I hope Tyler Alexander's doing okay. That's the dog, but... uh, you're going to face a lot of good pitchers there. You're going to face one of the better bullpens in baseball consistently when you face the Rays as well. The Rangers just won the World Series. Obviously, a lot of offense, but you're it's a four-game set. I don't know where they're at in the rotation, but you're likely going to face Nasty Nate, Eovaldi, right? That You're going to face good teams that can put up runs that have good pitchers. Mark Canna and Gio Urshela have been great, which it is worth noting that there's a legitimate argument 11 games into the season, okay, 11 games in, but it is, it is, I don't know, odd, is that the word? It is noteworthy, it's it's worth talking about and pointing out that the two best hitters on the team have been the guys that you brought in from free agency. It's not awesome for confidence, but we're 11 games in. We'll see how it plans out. Riley Green has been a lot better in the last five games specifically than he did to start off the season when he looked kind of all over the place and out of whack. Looks way better in the last five games. But this is the dangerous line you walk with a young roster when you didn't bring in a lot of outside help, right? You now need Spencer Torkelson to step up in a really big way. Need. It's not, oh, maybe. Well, if you want to keep your head above water over the next 14 games, you need Spencer Torgelson to step up. And that's fair. That That's a fair thing to say. That's what he's on this team to do. It's how the organization has, has built the lineup and the organization. Like, n- not that they're building the entire thing around a first baseman, but they, they in the lineup, he's batting two or three every game. He is in the lineup to drive in runs. He had over 90 RBIs last season. 
Obviously, everybody needs to be better. This is not me singling out Spencer Torgelson. Meadows needs to hit anything in the strike zone, which he has not done so far this season. He's got a batting average under 100. Jake Rogers has been really rough at the plate to start off the season. Got a single in that ninth inning against Bednar, but I'm not sure how much that counts for considering how rough he looks. And, that, and then he had the home run against the White Sox, and that's kind of it. Javi, obviously, has been... He's been hobby. <laughs> he, he he has not been very good at the plate. Colt Keith, I think there's good at bats in there, but the results haven't come yet. Colt Keith also kind of historically, and I'm not trying to make excuses for him and not everybody else, um, but he kind of everywhere he's been has started off a little bit slow. Then the results have come after about a month or so, a few weeks. So uh, maybe he can start getting hot. I'm not really worried about Colt Keith, though, I guess is my point. But my point is that your top of the lineup, your heart of the lineup, isn't doing much, and that's very clearly not sustainable. So, to keep your head above water, play competitive ball over the next two weeks, you need to hit. And again, th this is not rocket science. I I'm not telling you something that every single person listening to this is not already like, yeah, no kidding. But that is very obviously the way that you're going to be able to keep your head above water over these next 14 games. The bullpen will be good enough. We have some faith in the pen. The rotation, well, I don't think it's, it's you know, the best rotation in ball or anything. Shouldn't be the reason you're losing too many of these games. I don't foresee a lot of, you know, 10 to 8 losses in the Tigers' future. Hit, hit, hit. Hooray. All right. Now that we talked about that, kind of laid out again, we talked about April, talked about what this team needs to do. Let's talk about the Minnesota Twin Series. That is starting today. Four games set against the Twins. Game one here is supposed to be at 110 Eastern on Thursday, and then a 640 on Friday, a 110 on Saturday, and a 140 on Sunday. There's supposed to be rain on Thursday and Friday. So we're going to talk about this and preview this just business as usual, right? We're just going to talk about it as if these games are going to happen and they're going to be when they say they are. But keep that in the back of your noggin is that there's going to be a lot of rain and we could be without baseball for, I, I hope we don't have like three days off. I, I, oh my goodness. That can't be good for the momentum either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it can't be great when you're trying to find a groove, you're trying to get into a rhythm, you're trying to see major league pitching every day, get your timing down. And then you have two off days last week, and then a double header, and then you might have two or even three off days this week. I I hope not. Rain, rain, go away. Okay, let's preview these. Got some pitching matchups to talk about. The Twins rotation is really, really good. Uh, we're going to talk offense a little bit as well, just what the Twins have been doing this year. We'll do all of that right after this. Going to talk to you all today about our friends over at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Uh, look, the Red Wings, what, we got four games left. Brian and I have been talking a lot over at Locked on Wings about that playoff push. It's crunch time. And you have that along with baseball season in full swing. So FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment of Locked On Tigers. I appreciate you all for tuning in as always. Let's talk about these Minnesota Twins. Currently on the season, the Twins are four and six. They've already had some injuries. Unfortunately, Royce Lewis just has not been able to stay on the field. Now they're playing Byron Buxton in the field more, which I think is noteworthy. Last season, uh, they didn't as much. This season, the plan is to play him in center a little bit more. So we'll keep an eye on that. Obviously, Carlos Correa, who a lot of Tiger fans, myself included, wanted back in, what was that, three off, was that three off seasons ago now? Well, yeah, when we signed Javi, yeah. Uh, so 
They uh, The Tigers obviously bring in Javier Baez instead. That has not gone very well whatsoever. Uh, but Correa has not exactly been the $300 million man either. So they have a lot of potential still. And this team has offense and they have really good starting pitching. They have one of, if not the best closer in baseball. He's unfortunately hurt as well. That's kind of a break for the Tigers early on um, But uh, in Duran. But um, this is still a really good team. And the reason why they find themselves at four and six is because I want you to think for a second just about how frustrated you are with the Tigers and their inability to hit with runners in scoring position. Okay, just take a second. Think about all that anger you've had. And when you're like, man, I get so angry when they strand runners on base. It's so frustrating. Torkelson does it all the time. This person does it all the time. I get so mad at that. Okay. The Tigers have the 21st ranked OPS in baseball with runners in scoring position. 21st, okay? 675. Now that went up quite a bit in the ninth inning of the Pirates game as well. So it hasn't been great. The Minnesota Twins are dead last in every fathomable category of runners in scoring position stats so far. Again, 11 games into the season. They are hitting 117 with a 436 OPS with runners on second and or third base. That is catastrophically bad. Now, that will obviously not sustain. I don't care how bad you are. These are Major League Baseball players, and they got some good players on that team. They are not obviously going to end the season with an OPS under five, even 600 with runners in scoring position on the season. That being said, that is why they have found themselves two games under 500 so far. They just beat the Dodgers on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, that was a pretty good ball game. I watched that one. Uh, some day baseball there. And this is an opportunity for you as the Tigers to take advantage of a team who is getting off to a slow start. Your offense has not been great. Neither has theirs. And the Twins have pitching, which is what makes this a tall task. The pitching matchups for this series, Pablo Lopez versus Tarek Skubal, game one. Joe Ryan versus Kenta Maeda, game two. Bailey Ober versus Jack Flaherty, game three. And Louis Varland versus Reese Olsen, game four. Game one, that's like a marquee matchup. That's like old school like two of the best pitchers in baseball going at it, you know, nationally, it's not going to be, but like nationally televised, you know, all the media attention on it. That, that's like two premier aces in this sport going up against each other. That'll be a really fun matchup, even if it ends up being a one nothing or 2-1 game. Naturally, it's baseball too. This will end up being, you know, like 8-4 to four just because why not? But Pablo Lopez is fantastic. He's truly one of the better pitchers in the American League. Had 234, I want to say, strikeouts. Last season, really nasty everything, uh, but a really good fastball that kind of sets the table for his really nasty everything else. Game two there, Joe Ryan. I feel like Joe Ryan owns the Detroit Tigers. He has started six games against the Tigers, which is the third most that he started against any team. The Royals and Guardians are the only two teams he has started more games against. And opponents have a 199 average and a 566 OPS against him. He has a 357 career ERA against the Tigers in 35 and a third innings with a whip of 0.877 and a K per nine of 11.5. So he does. He, he does really well, <laughs> if you can tell, against the Detroit Tigers. This dude infuriates me. And it's from... It's from, I don't know, jealousy or or just like wishing he was on my baseball team. This dude only throws fastballs. That's a slight exaggeration. But he throws major, heavy majority fastballs and just dices everybody. His heater only goes like 92 to 94 miles an hour. He just pumps 93 all over the place, 60% of the time, 93 mile an hour fastballs, and no one hits him. The Velo's been gradually getting better the last couple of years. I think he's almost at about 94 so far and whatever, two starts this season. But 
Uh, he throws it a ton. He's been throwing the splitter more the last two years. That usage has gone way up. Um, so he's becoming a, really a, a big fastball splitter type of pitcher. But if you can't hit his fastball, you are toast. And the Tigers seem to never really be able to. He is very frustrating because he, he's a guy that from your couch, you're like, how is this even possible? And in the batter's box, you understand. He's really, really good at his job even though it's going to look like he's just throwing 93 all over the corners. Pinpoint command helps him a lot as well. Uh, Bailey Ober, really good pitcher as well. Rough start to the season, but but a, but a darn good and talented pitcher. is In his career, he just doesn't walk anybody, like ever. I think his walk rate last year was 5%, and that's in line with like the last two, two and a half seasons. So you're going to get a guy that's going to fill the strike zone. That's scary. Because the Tigers have done nothing with balls in the strike zone so far this season. So that's slightly concerning. Louis Varland is kind of a swingman type last year. Uh, getting some more starts, it looks like, this season. He's got decent stuff. We'll see. Don't have too much to add about him. But he has a pretty full repertoire. Four or five pitches. Really nice cutter that I like as well. Uh, on the Tiger side of things, Tarek Skubal, be great. Not really worried about you. Uh, Kenta Maeda, fastball velo and command. Jack Flaherty, fastball command, fastball command, fastball command. Reese Olsen, recover. Big picture, you're going to be shocked, fastball effectiveness. But in, in this small window of just like what I want to see on Sunday specifically, just fill the strike zone with your secondary stuff. Don't hang sliders. Don't just get it in there no matter what. But like he, he has such incredible change up and sliders you know his secondary pitches are so good just just throw strikes and throw a lot of your secondary stuff and you should be able to get out of there with a pretty decent performance um some other news and just not news some other notes rather from this series all four of the guys that i just mentioned on the twin side of things are righties so you're gonna see a lot of parker carpenter colt keith uh, this might be an opportunity for Winsiel Perez this weekend. He hits righties way better than he hits lefties, even though he's a switch hitter. Um, catcher, interesting. I mean, Jake Rogers has been way better defensively. I haven't been too impressed with Carson Kelly behind the dish, to be honest, so far. But Carson Kelly's hitting, and Jake Rogers isn't. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how they navigate that with no lefties, right? You're getting the off platoon on both of them. Um, so we'll, that'll, that'll be kind of interesting to see who gets more playing time there. Um, and yeah, this is going to be a, a, a series and not only this one, but obviously again, when you play them in a, in a week's time, you play them seven times in the next week and a half. And for a division that currently stands at Cleveland, eight and three, the Tigers seven and four, the Royals seven and four, the twins four and six and the White Sox two and nine. There's a lot of variance there. Now I'm not standings watching in April. Okay, I, I'm I'm not doing it. And I, I just read the standings. I don't want that to get misconstrued as me looking at other teams' wins and loss records in April. Just focus on yourself, win ball games, play the game in front of you. Okay. I'm not I'm not doing standings watch before the all-star break, nonetheless, in the month of April, nonetheless, nonetheless, the first half of April. Um, but it, you just have a lot of teams that are bunched up, and because you play the twins who are presumably the biggest threat to take the division and are currently behind you, that makes, again, as I've reiterated a million times, these next two weeks really, really, really important. Okay? So off day episode, not too much else to say. No big picture, really huge conversations. But but I, I do think it's important to really go down and, and just talk about where the Tigers stand and just really highlight the importance of you know, if if you were warming up or if you were waiting for the bats to get hot, you, you can't afford to do that anymore. That That's out the window. You, there, there's no more waiting and waiting around. You, we we got to hit the ground running here and we got to get this together or else we're going to look at the end of April and look at this baseball team and go, oh, my goodness, they, they completely collapsed. So uh, also decent chance that one of the next two days is or tomorrow this is a thursday episode tomorrow is uh, a rain out anyway so we'll see what happens there um i think that's it thanks for making us your first listen every day i appreciate you all greatly as always for tuning in and we will be back tomorrow peace and love going to therapy's dope i'll catch y'all then baby go tigers